So having this printf thing, just like the path.join, and then here's two things. So I'm wrapping up um, the creation of the file name and the temporary allocation of the storage. I don't need that that string storage after I've created the file name and opened the file. I don't need it. It's like it's really ephemeral storage. Um, so making that, copying these things into it with printf, um, that seems that seems pretty reasonable. Um, and so let's just go and look at the implementation, I guess. Uh, that's terrible. We'll, we'll just we'll just go there. Uh, can't remember how to. Can't remember how to go. How to visit the thing. Do you do that? No, no, you don't do that. Um, we we'll just search for it. <coughs> so here's the uh, implementation. You can see it takes this writer. Uh, and it just opens the file, does the does the printf with the file name template, and then it just opens the file and calls the writer function. That seems like a pretty useful thing to me. So I think that one of the things that we're going to get maybe in standard libraries is these more function-based um, calls. So then there was another example. I, I wrote this one first, so this was kind of obvious. But then there was another example to me. In, in the same code, I was doing this sort of thing. I was um, making a... Um, so this location string is actually starts off as a slice type. So it's just basically, you know, to a pointer and a len into a bigger buffer. Um, so that's the response header buffer, of course. Um, but to get it into JSON, I'm going to have to copy it out as a string. Okay, so then I thought, well, that's my own library. I've got my own slice library. What if I made a slice copy f? So slice copy normally takes uh, a, a string buffer. And so what you normally do is to take the length of the slice, allocate a string buffer, um, and then <clears throat> call slice copy to copy the slice into the newly allocated string buffer, uh, and then you know do with the string buffer whatever you want. And um, again, one of the reasons to use slices is to cut down on the copying. But in the end, you've got to you've got to do a copy, haven't you? You've got to copy. Uh, is it? It's a file. Anyway, whatever. You get my point that the copy is kind of the last thing you'll do, maybe, if you've got a slice and you can do comparison on the slice and all of those things. Um, but eventually you're going to want to copy the slice, probably. Um, so what if we had a slice copy f, which takes the function um, to handle the resulting copy? So the, this function copied is called with the resulting copied string. So the allocation all of the of the memory for that copied string all happens outside of the function. Um, <coughs> so <clears throat> I mean, there's a function call here. I guess it could be inlined. I guess. Um, I don't know how good compilers are going to be at deconstructing these sorts of um, nested callback, nested function callback, uh, closure type scenarios. Um, maybe they'll be terrible at it, in which case we're paying the price for uh, lots of function calls. But um, it seems like they'd be able to inline it. Um, anyway, you, you, you get the point. It, it makes that much easier. Again, though, we can see that it would be better to have um, textually inline, lexically inline um, control flow. So we'd be able to say, um, 
I guess, uh, slice copy f. Both the other th interesting thing is that both of these are being forced into function first, um, which perhaps is not so good um, from a readability point of view. But um, let's look at this. If we could, here we are. We're back to the thing. So that lambda control flow might be a better way of expressing what I'm expressing here. Um, but really what fascinates me is that, you know, these, these are like, this is my first few days of thinking about, oh, uh, like these things just haven't been available. Like there's no point using nested functions because um, of the terrible implementation. But now these things are available to us. Um, so we've got nested functions. It works. It's sensible. Um, and, you know, this is the, and closures are coming. Uh, these are the very first things that we start to do with it. These are kind of like, yeah, okay, we could, we could have libraries that passed in a function to do the completion um, and manage the resource uh, allocation. Oh, interesting. It's not just defer that we're getting. It's, you know, all of this new stuff that could make libraries and writing C code so much safer and simpler. Um, and this is just the first sort of five minutes of playing with it. What about, you know, map reduce type patterns? Um, uh, what other patterns can we invent uh, around wrapping up resource allocation and um, using closures to do it? So uh, anyway, yeah. I, I think that is super interesting and I just I did want to take a, just a few days before Christmas happy Christmas if you celebrate today is Christmas Eve so um, have a good one uh, if you celebrate and um, I just wanted to take those few days uh, just to talk about this and put this out there hopefully uh, somebody somewhere might get some value out of it um, uh, but if not and this revolution in C programming happens. Don't say I didn't tell you. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for watching, if you do. And uh, uh, see you all again in the new...